Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. We're in Asbury Park, New Jersey today, a city which is quickly becoming known for its art. And we're visiting Parlor Gallery, a unique vision in New Jersey's art community. Operated by Jen Hampton and Jill Ritchie, Parlor Gallery features work by both talented young artists who've never exhibited, as well as internationally collected and established artists. The space is welcoming, creative, inspirational, and full of innovation. Jill and Jen curate exhibits, assist with commission and placement, educate artists, and also participate in art projects around the city, like Wooden Walls Project along the boardwalk. We're talking to Jen today, who is telling us all about the gallery, the projects, and how they're helping create opportunity for artists within Asbury Park. The Wooden Walls Project started in, this is actually going into our fourth year, which is really exciting, especially because I waited six years for it to happen. Um, after Sandy, uh, we had a lot of a lot of the historical buildings were sort of ravaged, and I mean, ravage is a little dramatic, but <laughs> they had to put wooden sort of walls up to protect the building. As sad as that moment was, that was when my project started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went to Madison and I said, "Remember that project I keep talking to you about about public art? I feel like this is the time." Mm -hmm. And because our historical buildings, I feel always still look good, even in a state of disrepair. Okay. Not that they are in a state of disrepair, but because of the history. I mean, obviously they're worn, mm -hmm. and um, I felt like it's just adding to the the beauty of our already beautiful architecture in Asbury Park, which mm -hmm. is iconic in itself. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would just add to the beauty of that. It's curated, so basically what that means is I'll, I'll say to you, hey, here's 25 artists that I would suggest that would look great here. I wanted them to have a connection to Asbury Park so they would understand our community and the history and all the things that make us really special. And so the first year, everybody had some sort of six degrees of separation to Asbury Park. So that you'll see a diversity of a woman. Her name is Pal. She's Ecuadorian and Brazilian. She's sort of like this lovely artistic nomad that came here and spent, um, I guess she was here for like a good month and she did this beautiful piece and she was the first. And then there's our local artist who has um, sort of become synonymous with the public art programming here in Asbury Park. His name is Porkchop. He was an artist that was here, moved here 19 years ago. And when no one was looking, he would paint. And so his paintings got bigger and bigger and bigger. And they were pre the wooden walls. So they've become iconic in some way. So he was part of the project. And a political art activist artist from New York named Gilf. And there was just a lot of really interesting people that came together. And they didn't, they might have had a connection to Asbury Park, but they never spent a lot of time. So I think what was really special is they got to know our community. And so what happens is they take that experience home to them and say, you can't believe what goes on in Asbury Park. Little old ladies bring you cookies while you're painting and not yell at you. And I think that that's a very special and energizing feeling for artists, especially those that work in more urban environments where people are like, why are you painting this building? What is that? I hate it. You know. And so I think that that's really what sets our sort of project apart. It's very sensitive. It's it makes sense to our community, it's women, it's men, it's international, it's national, it's local, and so I think that's, to me, the most successful part of the project is the diversity of the project. It's like curating a party. <laughs> so it's like you want to invite this person and this person because this person has this really interesting background. And so on the Sunset Pavilion, which is um, sort of north of Convention Hall, just a few steps away, is where we've been focusing our uh, our last year of projects, our last two years of projects, because it's a double, sort of a double decker building. And it used to be historically, there was a walkway on top and there was stores on the top and on the bottom. And then there was like this circular sort of stairs that would take you down to the beach. And so you'll see these really interesting, when you see that, these interesting architectural sort of pieces that Jack, and you just look at the building, and I have no idea about what it is. So I feel like now the murals give it context and you can kind of appreciate the building where people just used to walk by and be like, oh, look, that's just a building, you know. So this year we had our first sculptural piece that was really great, an artist, her name is Jessie Knight. She's an artist that was originally from New Jersey. She's since moved to Miami. And she does sun installations where she takes a piece of metal and she cuts it in letters and it spells out words. So when the sun hits it, the shadow creates the art on the wall. 
which is very exciting. And as the year goes on, it's, it's new. She did it in June. And so this is the first year that we're going to see how the sun affects the length of the letters of the text. And so that's very exciting because then it, it's like a little treat throughout the year. Um, we also, the year before, we had two, this is a great story, we had two Brazilian artists, uh, a woman uh, that came into the gallery, asked about the local artist pork chop and said, how does he get walls and how does this happen? And I was like, why are you asking? And she's like, well, I have, a, I have a, a nephew who's a street artist. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and you, you're, you politely say, yeah, great, let me look at his work. And she had explained that he had just got done painting for the Olympics. So I'm like, oh, so yeah, he must be really good. And, and so she said, um, they're just coming here on a whim and hoping they have a wall to paint. So that was a really interesting dynamic because they barely spoke English. And so it was this really fun sort of like articulating through imagery and like spray paint. Like you would have to, because you, you, you have this process where you have this intimate sort of, you're with them for days, like getting them ladders and spray paints and stuff. So that was really fun because they just sort of literally flew in painted two walls and left. His name was uh, Thiago Valdi, and then and his goal is to paint on every continent on the earth. So that was what was really exciting because we'll be part of that journey and that project. This past year we had a self-taught artist from London. His name is Fanakapan, and he's known for, as you'll see, um, he does a sort of trick of the eye where he makes things look chrome. And when he got here, he was so inspired by the project, it went from one little panel to three panels and four panels. and it looks like a chrome octopus balloon, and you see the reflection of the ocean in their sunglasses. That's really special. The second year, we chose to use some of the artists from the first year, sort of as a way to continue their ideas from the first project to the second project. So the woman that I had referenced earlier, Pal, she has a abstract piece called The Strawberry Moon because she painted it during the Strawberry Moon in June. Uh, that's a very popular piece with prides. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that's really exciting about the project is that a lot of people that don't find that they're art people are all of a sudden art people because they want to get to the walls and they want to take their selfie and so they're selecting their favorites. So they're, they're choosing, they're becoming art people whether they believe it or not because they get so excited in the, in the moment and they want their picture taken. And so on a good, if like if you're ever in Asbury Park on a Sunday, it's, it's a good time watching people line up to the different, to take pictures of in front of the different walls and such. Danny Clinch did a really fun project here in Asbury Park. Um, he's involved in the Music and Film Festival. And he, as you know, is a music photographer. And, and at Bonnaroo, he did this really fun installation with a friend of his named R.C. Higgins. And it is a collaboration where an artist, a stencil artist, reinterprets his photographs in spray paint. So they took the whole back of this sunset pavilion and they took iconic photos from Danny Clinch's sort of portfolio, people that he chose that he thought would be really fun for this area. Things that I think that they together, I'm not sure how the collaboration happened, but what they came together here and they spent a week and RC made stencils and Danny provided the photographs. And so you, what you'll see is wheat paste of photos and all that means is that they take a copy and wallpaper mm -hmm. over wood so that you get the imagery and it becomes a piece of street art. Um, and then RC would reinterpret, he would cut stencils out of paper and then put them on the wall and take spray paint and then that would create the image of, from Danny's photograph. So that was really exciting to have them collaborate on the project together and it was called A Camera in a Can and we had a art walk and he he like addressed everybody brought his car it was a super yeah he's a great guy so it, it's fun to have him as part of our arts community here interesting you talk about arts community mm -hmm. we have to take a break now we yep. come back i want to talk about the arts in asbury park beyond what you're doing and how it's changed over the last decade or two we'll do that when we come back thank you so much for joining us we'll be back right after this welcome back we're taking in some amazing art today at the parlor gallery in asbury park new jersey Director and curator Jen Hampton is with us today to give us an overview of this wonderful space they put together and what kind of pieces one might find inside. So you've been around Asbury Park for over a decade. How has it changed for the arts community here? I first had a gallery here 10 years ago or 11 years ago and the same issues that we faced 10 or 11 years ago are the same issues that we face now which is just getting people in the door because prior 11 years ago when people weren't necessarily here and coming to Asbury Park, mm -hmm. it was a challenge to get them to come in. And now the challenge is there's so much to do in Asbury Park. It's another 
how do we get them in? So it's been a really interesting journey because, you know, as a business person, you can write a business plan, but you can't sometimes have the insight to see the, the problems and the strengths that you, you encounter in a developing sort of community. And so obviously it's better. There's people that we, it gets better every year. Um, however, that also challenges the arts community because that means that rents go up. That means it's harder for artists to find places to live and work. And so I think what we are trying to do through our sort of initiatives of public art, um, we're working with the city to try to expand the public art off the boardwalk so that it, it's all around town. And if you walk around town, you'll see it anyway, but more of a co like a cohesive sort of unified, we, Asbury Park's known for art or for music, so let's make it known for art now. Like, that's already, it's always gonna be that way. You don't have to work on that anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, Asbury's always had that history. And so now I feel like it's our job to try to make art something that goes hand in hand because they, they are harm harmonious. And, and I feel like people that are engaged in music don't realize they're art people until they actually have that experience. And so I feel like it was very frustrating for us when we opened that people would stand outside and be intimidated to come in and we've named it parlor so it's welcoming and we're very you know accommodating and we'll give you anybody an artist tour you know and and i feel like the public art has helped a little bit getting people like oh yeah that's that project's attached to the gallery and even you know you see in development which is really interesting um, now working with the city, I'm part of a uh, public arts commission, and you see a lot of applications coming in now that like, oh, I'm building a building, I would like a mural on the outside of it. And so that's really exciting because I feel like it's, um, it's catching. And, and soon I think you'll see like, people won't just talk about Asbury for music, that hopefully art will be a, a, a component that will be inseparable to that conversation. Parlor Gallery is great. We, uh, myself and artist Jill Ricci opened at night. We're gonna have our ninth birthday next month. Um, we wanted to be here, obviously, because of the community. It might have been a lot easier to open in New York City, <laughs> but there's something really, there was something really amazing about the energy here 13 years ago, whatever. It's, it's still here, but it's, um, it, it, it made you feel like there's potential. Like, of course we need a gallery, what? And so it's interesting, when I moved here 13 years ago, there were like six galleries, now there's four. And so you have to question, like, why is that? And what's happening? And, and just stick together and continue the work like this since this weekend we're involved in this thing called the light of day which is uh pat scavino from gallery 629 he does this art and music walk and it started as a way to get people into the galleries get them in through music just like i said so but now it's become more of the music than the art but either way it's a really fun weekend and, and people all want it to happen for the art community here and i think it's really important for it to happen to continue making asbury park a little different we made a decision when we opened to sort of um, showcase art that we like, which <laughs> sounds a little selfish, but um, I think that it's really, for me, it's really important, and for us as uh, curators and directors, it's really important to give this community an opportunity to see art that they might not see in a 1.6 square mile town, you know, by the beach in, in Asbury Park, and because a lot of people are like, you're where? <laughs> when we, we do a lot of art fairs out of this community where we go to Miami or New York and you know you'd be surprised how many people are like where's that so it's always exciting to see like oh you have a gallery there that's great now these days it's a little bit more accepted because of all the press that Asbury has been getting but um, we like to showcase art that might not have a home in other places pop art surrealism figurative art so we chose to show a lot of different genres of art just that people don't have access to in small towns. And I thought that that was really important because we knew this would get, be a lot of education. And so bringing people in, there's a lot of art that they're not usually exposed to. And so for us, it's important to appeal to a younger collector that might have $100 and say, I like art, can I really buy something? Or to somebody who's a more seasoned collector, who's like, oh, I usually get my art in New York, but this is great. I found this little place in Asbury Park that shows, you know, has my favorite oil painter or whatever. So we, we work a lot with painting. Uh, we also work with uh, sculptors and installation artists and street artists, as we had discussed earlier. And so we're located on Cookman Avenue. And this is the first block of Cookman Avenue. And when we opened up nine years ago, it was like us and three other people. So it's really fun to see this block evolve. We jokingly called it the arts block but it's stuck somehow, which is great. And so now we have an art house movie theater. We have next door, we have the garden, which is a recycled, like an artist who takes recycled goods and makes sculptures out of them. 
because it's a plot of land that will soon be developed, but it's not. So in the interim, he's made it a, like when you come here at night, it's all lit black light. He's painted everything. So it's like when you drive down Cookman, it's like, oh, where am I? <laughs> it's very magical. Across the street, we have Catsbury Park, which we curate the cat art for them. And we're also going to be doing a cat art show for them. They're doing a cat convention on. And so I feel like the name has helped. <laughs> bring this block to fruition, if you could say that, calling it the arts block. We also have Shelter Home, where we do a collaborative project with them, where they take imagery from the Wooden Walls project, and they put it on limited edition towels and bags since we're by the ocean. Trevor, thank you so much for having us here, and good luck with Asbury Park and all the arts that you do here. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. We'll be back right after this.